Today I want to chat with you about a question that many of you have had, which is how can an American fiddler sound more like an Irish fiddler? And no, you don't need to wear an Irish hat, but shout out to Muck Ross Weavers because I was feeling in the mood to wear a hat today. So whether you're coming to Irish music from a classical background or maybe a more old time or Americana style of fiddling, let's go through some of the most important things you can do to get more of an Irish sound in your fiddle style. Before I get too far into it, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified every other Thursday when I post a new Irish fiddle tip video. And if this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Hannah Harris, and I help my Irish fiddle students go from feeling kind of bland about their tunes to coming back feeling like a true musician and absolutely buzzing after a great night of tunes at a session. Okay, so step number one, listen and play along with Irish traditional recordings. Pick a few fiddlers that you like and get in the habit of listening to them regularly and then playing along with the recordings so you can mimic the style in your own playing. The truth is, there's no one right way to play Irish fiddle, but there is a way to prevent it from being a complete and total free-for-all. I got you started with a little list here. These are fiddlers that I love listening to, and they all sound totally different from one another, but depending on what season you're in, you can kind of pick on who you want to really be absorbed in their style of playing, and you get to move around and study nude people all the time, so it's a lot of fun. And just to really drive this point home, I'm going to go ahead and play a jig for you now, and I would love for you to get out your fiddle and play along, and keep coming back to this part of the video to practice along with me. Alright, step two is to make sure you know where your meter lies. While this isn't universal throughout all the regional styles and individual styles in Irish music, typically you're going to feel the beat more on beats one and three, so that's what you would tap your foot along to, that's maybe what your accompanist would put more stress on. And then in Americana, old time fiddle, maybe you'll hear it more on the back end of the beat, so beats two and four in a cut time, if we're working with a cut time 4-4 four, four measure, you'd hear it more on the back end of that beat, so two and four whereas Irish music is more one and three on top of the beat. To help demonstrate that, I'll play an Irish reel as well as an old-timey reel so you can hear a little bit of the difference in the emphasis and the stress.
Also, I would love to get to know you more. So let me know in the comments below, are you coming from a trad background, a classical background, maybe another fiddle genre? I'd love to hear it. Let me know in the comments. Moving on to step three, and this one is especially for my classical players. Go ahead and use sheet music. Yes, use it, use it as a tool, but if you are faced with the decision between listening, trusting your ear of what you're hearing in a recording versus trusting your eyes, what you're seeing on the page, always go with your ear. Here's why. So there are so many different sources for sheet music out there, whether you're sourcing it from thesession.org or maybe you have a book of tunes, it's all going to be a different version of the same tune out there. So it's, it's just one one moment in time of that tune was captured and put on a page and it's meant to evolve a little bit more. It's not meant to be stuck to just the notes. Also, when it comes to ornamentation and maybe even bowing, there are going to be patterns that don't match up both times through the tune. People have different way of notating ornaments, myself included. I have my own notation system that I like to use with little keys for how to write ornaments. And I'll actually show you on the screen here so you'll see that there's a grace note. What you would read is just sounding like And for a roll, that doesn't really sound like a roll now, does it? So you would actually be playing that with a little bit more delay. But it's just the way that it's notated. It's easy enough for the composer to write that that is how the notes come in to the roll. It's not directly played like that. It's actually played a little bit more delayed. So you can hear how it's not sounding exactly the way it's written on the page. The last step I'll give you today is to get really smooth with your bow. This could look like getting more connected with the string. your wrists. Yeah, that one I did right away. Um, sorry, I'm doing this. <laughs> or it could be trying a different bow hold. You want to find a way that allows you to feel comfortable while playing and also develop that natural fluidity and the nuances like emphasis and ornamentation that are so characteristic of Irish music. Before we wrap up, I just want to have a little heart to heart with you because I just want to say that it is totally okay to not be 100% Irish. It's okay if you didn't grow up in the tradition. It's okay if you keep things like your vibrato, your Americanish accent on the fiddle, if you still use sheet music to help you learn. All of those things are welcome. All of those things are okay. These are all things that I identify with or have identified with in the past, and I'm proud of that now. I don't let that the fact that I grew up classically trained, I didn't grow up in the trad scene, I certainly do have a bit of American accent and a vibrato when I play Irish tunes on occasion, and I don't let that affect my worth or my belief that I belong in this space. So I want to pass that along to you too and empower you to feel the same. So the real takeaway is don't try to be someone that you're not, but if you really do want to sound more Irish in your fiddling, follow these steps consistently and get ready to hear results in your playing. And I know it's one thing to watch one video and get all motivated to put in the work and a totally other thing to actually put that work into practice. So. If you want additional support and accountability beyond this video, I would love to chat with you further and see how I can best support you. In order to do that, I need you to click the link below this video and book a free 15 minute Zoom call with me where we'll talk about your goals and how I can help you reach them. 
The link is on my private lesson page, but I have several more learning opportunities coming up this spring. So even if you're feeling like private lessons aren't a good fit for you right now, I want you to go ahead and book a call and get on a chat with me because there's a very good chance that there's something for you coming really soon. If you're curious on how I transitioned from sounding like a classical violinist into an Irish fiddler, you can watch this video here where I get into all the details. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more fiddle tips. As always, I appreciate you and your dedication to improving your Irish fiddle skills. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.